before you attempt to describe something that is extremely complicated, we must start with the basics. What is the first way to describe the structure of a protein? We always start the structure of the protein with something referred to as the primary structure. All right. Now, the primary structure, by definition, this is important for the exam, by the way, because they may ask you what is meant by the primary structure of the protein. Some books will just call it primary proteins, by the way. Um, and the primary structure is basically described as a polypeptide chain made up of a sequence of amino acids. Now, I'm drawing out two polypeptide chains, one in red, one in blue. But if you can't distinguish the colors, just know that there is one chain at the top and one chain at the bottom. The reason why I'm calling them polypeptide chains is because each chain consists of amino acids linked together by peptide bonds. And I've represented those amino acids in those uh, as circular as those circular symbols. You can see those amino acids right there. And I'm also just drawing out the structure of the peptide bond as a reminder, C double bond O and H. Those are the peptide bonds. Now, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Are these two polypeptide chains similar? Some of my students will say, well, no, they're not similar. They are different colors. Let's ignore the color. Let's just look at the lines. Uh, ignoring color, assuming the color is the same, are these two chains similar? The answer is no. These two chains are not similar. They both have different primary structures. The reason why they have different primary structures is because, well, the length of the chain differs. Why does the length of the chain differ? Perhaps the chain at the top is made up of lesser amino acids linked together. The chain at the bottom is made up of more amino acids linked together. So right from the get-go, you can see that the primary structure can be determined by the length of the polypeptide chain. But it's not just determined by the length of the polypeptide chain. Another example I'm going to give you here is polypeptide chain A and polypeptide chain B. If you notice, polypeptide chain A is made up of four amino acids linked together. Chain B is also made up of four amino acids linked together. But do they then have the same primary structure? No. The primary structure in this case is also different. The reason why it's different is because even though the length may be the same, they consist of different sequences of amino acid. So it's not the primary structure of the protein is not just determined by its length. It's also determined by what type of amino acids are put in there. And that's what makes it a bit more complicated. So from the primary structure, we can then do the secondary structure. I'm drawing out a long chain, and that long chain is described as the primary structure. Now, I want you to see what has happened to the long chain. That same long chain has now started to form weird shapes within itself. And the two weird shapes that I want you to focus on are the coilings, and the foldings that have started to appear. I've highlighted the coil and I've highlighted one fold that has happened. So secondary structure of proteins are basically described as a polypeptide chain that has formed coils or folds within itself. And then, uh, and, and here's where it becomes uh, a, a little bit more complicated. Why does it start to form coils or folds? This is a very important question. Let's imagine a single straight polypeptide chain. That's a primary structure, and each of those circles are just amino acids. Now, that same chain has now started to curve or coil. Now, why does it curve or coil? We start noticing bonds appearing between amino acids that were supposed to be far away from each other. All right? Like, for example, amino acids that are not linked close to each other, start to form hydrogen bonds, which I've represented in those dotted lines. As a student in A-levels, you do have to explain why a secondary structure or how a secondary structure is formed. Now, if you remember, peptide bonds contain C double bond O and also NH bonds or NH groups. C double bond O, NH if you also remember in my video on hydrogen bonding, 
I did mention before that C double bond O usually carries a partially negative charge and NH usually carries a partially positive charge. I'm drawing out a, I've just highlighted that single portion over there where I've represented it as amino acid 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we can see that the NH group has a partially positive charge and the C double bond O has a partially negative charge. And lo and behold, a hydrogen bond is formed between them. And because a hydrogen bond is formed between them, the amino acids, uh, sorry, the polypeptide chain becomes curved. And the hydrogen bond is the one that's causing this curve to happen. So there are two types of secondary structure within a polypeptide chain that can form. Number one, it can form something called the alpha helix. And number two, it can form a folding called the beta pleated sheet. The reason why it's called the beta pleated sheet is because it looks like the folding of a paper. When you're trying to make a paper fan, uh, that's a pleat. A pleat is like a fold. So it gives the illusion that it's the chain is folded. Uh, in reality, it's not. Um, and most importantly, for the exam, they will represent the alpha helix as a coil and they will represent the beta sheet or the beta pleated sheet as an arrow. So what do, uh, how does that look like in reality? If we were to just basically draw out two chains, there's one polypeptide chain on the left and there's one polypeptide chain on the right. Uh, the polypeptide chain on the left will form two alpha helix, as you can see there, and the polypeptide chain on the right will form, as you can see, two beta pleated sheets and an alpha helix that is represented as the two arrows and the coil. So some chains may fold, some chains may coil, some chains may do a combination of both. What determines uh, we don't, again, we don't have to memorize which chain does what. We just have to know that the primary structure is just a single chain and the secondary structure is just that same single chain, but it starts to form coils or pleats. And the coils or pleats are usually due to the formation of hydrogen bonds between the NH and C double bond O bonds. That's basically it.